Okay, good morning, everyone. Um, this is my second attempt at this video, so I'm just I'm gonna take a minute and I'm just gonna just find some peace and worship for a minute, if you don't mind. How are you? Um, it's been a while since I've made a video. Uh, I just tend to make the short videos either because I'm busy or it's just when the Lord moves me to and, and, and gives me time to make a little short video, I make it. But I want my friends and family members and anybody who's not saved um, to understand where I'm coming from. And I want you to know please don't click off of this video you know just please listen like that because you're gonna do one of two things you're gonna receive what I say with joy and excitement and and you're gonna repent and believe in your heart um, that what us watchmen are saying to you is very true and, and it, you're gonna go through this process of waking up like a butterfly it's painful a little bit but it's so beautiful or the other thing you're going to do is you're going to take what I say and you're going to allow Satan to steal it from you and you're not going to believe me. And you um, could most likely perish for that, you know, um, and I'm going to prove it right here. You know, when you read the Bible and you take and you and you really process it um, word for word, what God says and realize, well, how did God know this? You know, how? How, how could he possibly know this? So it says right here, this is out of the parable of the sower, which is in Mark 4. It says, as soon as they hear it, Satan comes and takes away the word that was sown in them. Right there. See? Or it says, um, others, like seeds sown on rocky places, hear the word and at once receive it with joy. But since they have no root, they last only for a short time. But I know that most of my friends and family members and people who took me to church and taught me, um, they are rooted in the word. And I just wanna tell you right now that everything that you have ever learned in the Bible was for a reason. The Lord has raised you up. Um, one second. Sorry. Uh, the Lord has raised you up um, with gracefully. He's raised you like a heavenly father and taught you these things. You may have just forgotten. And so I just want to come here today and... Um, Number one, just, just start off with praying, because uh, I can't do this without the Lord. And uh, dear Lord, thank you. Thank you for your word. Thank you for saving me. Thank you for using me. And I, and I just ask that you fill me with your Holy Spirit, and you speak the things that you have taught me through the Holy Spirit, Father God. Um, and I ask that you bless anybody that is watching this. Let them know I love them. Let them know you love them. Um, and this is not a coincidence that they're here. They're here for a reason. Um, and Lord, uh, I just ask that you give them peace that passes all understanding and that you help them to listen to the end. I won't make this video very long, Father God, but most importantly, that you help guide my words. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 
Okay, so where do I start? Um, okay, I'll just start here in Mark. So Jesus called them and spoke to them in parables. How can Satan drive out Satan? If the kingdom is divided by itself, that kingdom cannot stand. If a house is divided against itself, the house cannot stand. And if Satan opposes himself it is, and is divided, he cannot stand. His end has come. In fact, no one can enter a strong man's house and carry off his possessions unless he first ties up the strong man. Then he can rob his house. I tell you the truth, all the sins and blasphemies of men will be forgiven them. But whoever blasphemies against the Holy Spirit will never be forgiven. He is guilty of an eternal sin. He said this because they were saying he was an evil spirit. The parable of a growing seed. He also said, this is what the kingdom of God is like. A man scatters seed on the ground. I'm getting emotional. Okay. A man scatters seed on the ground night and day. Whether he sleeps or gets up, the seed sprouts and grows. Though he does not know how, all by itself, the soil produces grain. First the stalk, then the head then the full kernel in the head. As soon as the grain is ripe, he puts the sickle to it because the harvest has come. The parable of the mustard seed. Again, he said, what shall we say the kingdom of God is like? Or what parable shall we use to describe it? It is like a mustard seed, which is the smallest seed you plant in the ground. Yet when planted, it grows and becomes the largest of all the garden plants with such big branches that the birds of the air can perch in its shade. With many similar parables, Jesus spoke the word to them as much as they could understand. He did not say anything to them without using a parable. But when he was alone with his own disciples, he explained everything. The Lord allows you to grow, you know. There are so many times that I was, I did not understand this, it, it, you know, and that's that's what I want my kiddos to know or any other loved ones, that you can read the Bible every day and a scripture that you've read and you've known before can come alive and make sense because the Lord knows your heart is true and you're seeking him and and he says, those who seek me, find me. Okay, um, listen, the reason I'm getting on here is because I know the Lord is coming as well as many people. And I know that there's people that say, um, you know, that they don't want to watch a video of stuff that they already know, but forgive me for that. The point is to to, to save one more. If you're saved, then hallelujah, you're my brother and sister, you know. Um, and the way to be saved is not through your works. It's not through what you've done. If you've never been to church, it's okay. If you've never done anything for the Lord, it's okay. All you have to do is believe that Jesus died on the cross. He died on the cross for you. He died for you and for your sins, your past, present, and future. Um, and he was buried, and he rose again on the third day. And you have to confess with your mouth that he is Lord. Just like Jesus is Lord. Jesus is my king. He is my savior. Um, I believed that I believe that he walked on this earth um, in the flesh, sent by the Lord, sent by God. He is God. Um, you know, and by the blood that he shed on the cross, 
you are healed. By his stripes you are healed. It was prophesied in the book of Isaiah. And um, my son's name is Isaiah. And, 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 the, and the Lord, he just, he never, he never stops giving, you know. Um, when my son was named, I, I, I knew the Lord. And I knew why his dad named him that. But I never took it to heart. I never put two and two together that at that time I didn't, it, it didn't hit my heart as much as it did like three years ago. Um, you know, Isaiah, the prophet Isaiah, he prophesied that, that our king would die, you know, the Messiah, he would die and by his stripes we are healed. And um, I believed it when I was 20 years old. I, I gave my life to the Lord. But when I was 20 years old, um, I went through this process of going to churches and and I learned a lot. I don't, I, I'm not upset with the, the times I went to church, but I wasn't as strong as I was now. And I always felt worn out, you know, like every Sunday we went and the pastor had a new message of how we weren't doing enough, and we weren't doing enough, and we weren't doing enough. And, um, and I just, there was, there were people in the church that no matter what we did, it felt like they controlled everything and, and we would never be in their position. And, and I don't mean that cruelly. I love everybody that taught me. It was just, and maybe it was just meant to be taught like that. But at the same time, I always thought I was working my way to heaven is what they were teaching me. And you don't have to do that. You're good enough. If you're a sinner, Jesus understands you're a sinner, but he loves you. So he's just saying, come back to me and, and I will help you make you strong so that you can let go of your sins. You can rebuke the devil. You don't have an illness. You don't, I mean, some people have mental illnesses and depression and things like that. But what I've learned is um, no therapist can help you like Jesus can. You know, I've been to therapists. I had a, I had a mom, you know, that she committed suicide. And when I was young, I had to go to a therapist and, 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 and God bless them. You know, they, they were there. They seen that I was okay, I guess. And But they didn't heal my heart from what had happened. Only Jesus can do that, you know. Um, he takes a stony heart and he makes it soft, you know. Um, when I was younger, I used to cry because I had such a big heart for the world. And, uh, and God puts that in there. That's good. If, if you have a heart, if, if you have compassion, you're in a good place. It's those people that don't have compassion and are only thinking of themselves that are in a very dangerous place. Um, pride, you know, ask the Lord to take your pride. Ask the, you know, humble yourself to God. And uh, um, you know, my point to be on here is is to prove to you that everything you have learned, every story is, is alive right now and it is ringing loud like wedding bells. That's what I, I learned this morning or, or what I thought of this morning. Every, every story, King David, um, Jesus is going to come back and be king. He is the root and the offspring of King David. He is the Messiah that the Jews, many of them, don't know that Jesus is their Messiah. But they will. No matter what happens, it is written in this book. And everything that has been written in this book has been fulfilled. And that's another thing. Jesus had to die on the cross. You know, I've heard that line where they're like, how could a loving God send his son on the cross to die? And... Jesus knew. He knew he had to die on the cross. He actually rebuked Peter, um, who had what he thought was in his heart, you know, saying, Lord, please, please don't do this. And and Jesus rebuked him, you know, his, his friend. He said, get behind me, Satan. And um, 
because he had to die on the cross. But my point is, if you go through this Bible, everything is coming alive, like Job. Um, there is real spiritual warfare. It's very, very real. And um, But the Lord will never give you more than you can handle. And holy cow, in the last three years, well, not holy cow, don't worship cows. I don't know why that saying is there. But anyways, <clears throat> Jesus, you know, or, or the enemy has thrown everything at me you could possibly throw at me. And, and I think the Lord, through prayer and through battle and through asking other people for prayer, he's helped me through it all. I mean, sickness, um, familiar spirits through my kids, my own children, um, through my loved ones. I've had people come up to me and actually, or, or over the phone just actually yell at me like, the rapture is not real and I need to grow up and, and things. And, and these are people that I've prayed for for years that I love. And um, no one deserves, no one deserves what is coming is my point. Not, not one. I, I don't, not one person deserves what is coming in the seven year tribulation. So when us Christians say, get on the ark, we're meaning Jesus is the only way to God. Believe in the gospel. That's all you need to do to be saved. That's it. Um, but then you keep on learning because he, it's God's will that none shall perish for lack of knowledge. That's not other books. That's not schooling in college. Um, that's the word of God. He teaches you how to battle. He teaches you that he is coming. He teaches you how to be patient. He teaches you how to be joyful. He teaches you how to mourn with others and carry each other's burdens. He teaches you discipline. Um, he teaches you the fear of the Lord is the first step to wisdom. Um, and he teaches you peace through the Psalms. You know, he's, he's got you in his, in his, the palm of your hand, in his hand. You know, he goes before you and behind you when you are weary. And sometimes, like a father, he lets you go and he lets you fight so that you can get stronger. Um, and the battle to make these videos are very hard. Uh, I'm afraid somebody's gonna, already judged me and afraid... You know, but I'm going to take a minute and I wrote some things down that are going on right now that I just jotted off of my head. If you don't believe the Lord is coming, you have to look at the signs. He said, watch when he was in the garden. He said, watch. Um, he says it several times. Why do you think he he talks about uh, a thief coming into the night? And, and just for just why do you think those parables are there? Why do you think he put Matthew 22 in the in the wedding supper? You know, you have to read your Bible to understand. I could read it for you, but something happens, a relationship between you and Jesus happens when you read the Bible yourself. Um, and you have to look at the things of the world and, 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 and wake up and wonder why. Why are they putting people in prison for speaking the gospel? but they won't take people off the internet for doing child pornography. Think about how wrong that is. Um, people are constantly going to prison or it's starting up for, for what they call conspiracy theorists information um, on, online. And these are people that are telling you the truth. They're telling you that war is coming just like Jeremiah did in the Bible. God is sending you signs, just like Moses when he approached Pharaoh and he in the 10 plagues. I mean, the Lord has been sending signs through people and through all over this earth. I mean, if you haven't seen it, you know, Moses kept approaching Pharaoh and, and God gave him many times to repent and believe in him until finally the children were gone. 
And uh, that's the story of Passover. He put the blood over the door. Well, now that we've read the whole Bible, we understand that Jesus is the door. And by his blood shed, we are healed. But the Lord, years ago, you know, he, he asked those that believed in the one true God to put the blood of the lamb on the door, on the doorpost. You realize that? He used the lamb. Only God could do that. Only God can tell you that the Euphrates is drying up. When the kings from the West are going to, you know, when the war is coming. And you would only know this if you read your Bible. So please read your Bible. And if you have trouble reading, you know, don't listen to a song today. Listen to the audio Bible and just try. God will be there. Pray to him, you know. Um, seek him. Pray to him. Seek him. Ask him questions. And you will have a battle. And it'll be hard sometimes. Maybe not. I pray you have peace in the Lord. I'll pray for you if you watch this video. Um, but you have to pray for yourself. You say, Lord, please, please give me a, give me a room so that I can spend time with you. Um, and for people that think that certain people are not in their lives so they don't love them, you know, God even put that in the Bible. The story of Martha and Mary where her sister was like, Lord, can't, can't you tell her to help me? But what she was doing is she was learning about God. She was learning about Jesus. So if you have a loved one that hasn't been there in a while and, and you want to blame them for that, maybe they're, they're just they're spending time with God. And, uh, and I pray you do that. Okay, I'm sorry. I, I can be all over the place, and that's why I don't make these videos sometimes. But please just listen to me. I know that I know that I know the Lord. Every day I have studied and I have listened to Watchmen, and I might get things a little bit wrong, but I know that he's coming. And I am excited. And, and okay, these are just the things I've jotted off that I need you to think about. Okay, it says, girls at the border, women are taking the depot so they don't get pregnant because of rape. You can fact check it. It's true. And that, that is devastating. Um, I'm a female. I thank God that I've never been raped. Um, but I have had men that were very close in, my, in, in times in my life. I mean, times when I was young, I had those zip-up pajamas. I had a moment um, where my mom, she saved me and she kicked a guy out when I was very young. And I had an older gentleman that I watched his house. And um, yeah, so please, I, I, I don't, you know, I, I pray against rape, it's evil. Um, and there's always going to be evil people in this world. The remnant is small, but I pray that you are part of God's remnant because he will protect you. He, he will save your heart from rape. Um, but my point is, is that's happening at the border. Um, and, and I heard that there was a report that people are even finding bodies in their, on their properties at the border. That is going on. You know, uh, people are fighting about trans, whatever things going on. There's people being raped and killed and sold into child trafficking at our border. Um, so that's going on and that's probably not going to stop. So that's why the rapture is important. Uh, a place without pain. Everything good that came from God here that you see is most likely in heaven. Um, you know, love and kindness and peace and beauty and, and flowers and, and music and, and, and the good things that came from the Lord um, are in heaven. And this earth right now is Satan's and you don't want to be here. Okay, the banking system. More and more stores are turning to cards. And, and I can tell that, you know, we all just, you know, people just kind of, were guided into it through their banking systems. And 
but do you realize that the that please if you if you're a, a store owner please keep taking cash as long as you can um, and if you are used to using cards try to go back to cash I mean I'm gonna just gonna tell you might as well just take your money out of the banks because they have changed the banks and I have proof right here thumb trust bank this is a letter from my bank that has been the same since I was a kid. I had a savings account when I was a little kid. Now it has changed to the bigger banks, knocking out the little banks so that they can watch everything you do. If you wanna fact check it, look at the World Economic Forum and you will see all their plans. You know, they plan to raise the gas prices so that you don't drive and blame it on climate change. Um, but really it's not climate change. Well. It's them messing with our weather, for one, and it's God's wrath. God's showing you that he's coming. So there's that. Um, oh, train bomb. Okay, so if you look in your Bible, it says God in the last days will pour out his spirit and people will have dreams and visions, and you can look on the Internet there are hundreds of thousands or hundreds of people that have dreams and then there's just people that have dreams every day and they are um they know they are from the lord and all you have to do is listen you know god says uh, let the spirit of the bride hear you know uh, what the church is saying we are the church the bride is speaking to the world jesus is giving them dreams and they can't help but record it and tell you and so that scripture is in the bible think about it how did it get there because god it is the word of god jesus knew he knew that this was coming you have to wake up wake up and don't go back to sleep because it's so exciting but the reason i wrote train bomb is because two years ago um right before i woke up i heard train bomb and it, and I just, you know, I kept it to myself and I, I, I worried a little bit, but now there's all these train derailments. And I hope you know that this is, that it's sabotage. The chemical plants, the food plants, the train derailments, they are crippling us. They're like kicking us in the shin all over the place. They are ruining our land. And you think, why would they do that? Because they're ruining it for themselves. Let me tell you, there are fallen angels and there are demon-possessed people that they don't care. They don't care about you, okay? They're, they're stuck here on this earth forever because they were cast down, never to go back. And so they don't care about you. Um, Anyways, they're ruining. And then I had another dream that was crazy. And there was some good parts of it. I was in a church and some of the ladies I know, uh, sisters in, in Christ, they were making sack lunches in paper bags and they were handing them out. And, and then I knew that there were people downstairs teaching kids and worshiping. But another thing that I thought was really odd as I was upstairs and there was like a, a worship concert going on and it was led by Warren Haynes, <laughs> which is pretty cool because I love, I grew up, I like Warren Haynes. He, um, you know, I was a little bit of a hippie, but what he was singing about was there was poison in the water. And this was, I don't know, maybe a year ago I dreamt this. And I thought, well, that was weird. I dreamt about Warren Haynes, you know? Um, saying there's poison in the water. And now look at what's going on. There are poisons in the water all over the place, old pipes, um, not to mention the chemicals that they put in on the land, sinking into our waters, the chemicals that are coming from chemtrails. You know, I always I just didn't know about the chemtrails, if they were real or not, until now I've seen three major videos of, of um, I don't know what the word is, but the people that were talking were very professional. 
that chemtrails are real and they're doing it to like black out our sun. They are the, the, the rulers, the higher up Illuminati, they are ruining our earth. Like I said, because they don't get to go to heaven. They don't care. They, you know, Satan's agenda is to kill off as many people as quickly as he can before you give your life to Christ. So I pray that you give your life to Christ. Um, and I pray you know I love you. And I don't always talk I'm so serious. You know, I'm just a mom. I play with my dogs. I hope you guys have seen my videos. I, you know, the Lord is peaceful, but I just I have to say these things. Okay, another thing, giving ketamine for depression and and all the the evil stuff that they're doing. Um, my nephew, um, he had an operation not too long ago, and he come out, he's doing good. But do you know what they gave him, what my sister said they gave him? They gave him fentanyl. He's two years old. They put him out with fentanyl, when fentanyl is the biggest killer in the world. Um, and the reason I'm saying this is because my heart breaks, because I know there's a lot of good people in the world that their whole lives, you know, their parents and schools and people told them don't do drugs. And, um, and so they didn't. But now doctors are prescribing those very same people horrible, horrible drugs. And why do I know? Because I've been there. I've been in the darkness. I've been around drugs, um, like pills and crystal meth and every drug you can name. I've, I've been around or I've tried and, um, and I've, and I've also tried to save my friends from them. And God has been faithful and saved some of the people that I love that were addicts as well. And I'm not perfect. I'm going to tell you, I'm not perfect, but I am with the Lord. I'm saved and sealed. And because he's brought me out of all those things, I know the things that I go through. He's going to bring me out. I know, and, and I've been working on this, and, and he's been faithful. I mean, um, but the point is, I hate my sins. I hate my sins so much, and and that's where you should be, because if you don't hate your sin, that means you love this world, you know? And and if, if you love, I'm just going to say this, if you love Satan, if you think you're a Satan worshiper and, a, you know, rock and roll music, whatever, do you realize what you are supporting? This is the very same God that persuades people to rape people. The very same evil enemy, Satan, and his demons that persuade people to um, scream at their wives or husbands, to cheat and, and break hearts. You know, he, he destroys everything. But when you read, when, when you have the Lord on your side and, and you seek him every day, he protects you every day. I mean, I don't know. And you, and you count it all joy when you're persecuted uh, because you know you're saved and sealed and they're persecuting you for the Lord, you know. Um, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. So, okay. Another thing, um, yeah, prison for posting the truth. So many people and so many laws are being passed for even speaking of Jesus, and they're going, they've been in prison. They've been in prison. They've been killed. They've been beheaded for Jesus Christ. I mean, think about that. All our lives we were taught that, you know, Christians killed and, and all these things, they're killing Christians right now, in this moment. People always say, live in the moment. That's what's going on. Fact check it, <laughs> you know? Um, this is a big one. Um, kids raptured. <clears throat> if you don't take me serious right now, everything you're holding on to Please get right with God, because the last thing I want to see happen to you is your ch child disappear with the twinkling of an eye. And understand that the God is a loving God, and children are innocent. 
and he he knows they don't belong here. They go before us, you know. They're they're the they're the most precious thing, and I don't blame God because I know what's happening. Take the children, Lord. Take the children before you take me. I get it. I understand, you know. And I and we there's not a scripture in the Bible that I can find that can prove. It's just something in my heart that understands that the Lord is going to take the children. And that also is the last plague um, when Moses approached the Pharaoh, the children were gone. And, and that used to, I mean, my kids have read that and they were like, Mom, how could God do such a thing? And now that I know that God is a loving God, those children are in heaven. You know, um, and God bless them. You know, they're in heaven because God knows he doesn't want them to be here with nuclear weapons and and people starving, and pestilence. And, and so know that if the rapture happens, there's a big, big, big chance that you ch- and you don't believe that your children are going to go no matter what. And, and many people don't talk about that, and I'm going to bring that up because um, I want to pull you out of the fire. I want you to understand how important this is uh, to make sure you're right with Christ. Make sure you believe in the gospel, and you don't have to do anything else, but I do ask you to read and let the Lord fire you up for him and know how important it is to tell other people that Jesus is coming and seek him every day and and seek certain watchmen like Chad, Watchman 88, um, Watchman River is a good one. J.D. Farag is a wonderful person to watch. Um, just every day, just try. I have a community page. I I usually give my daily bread. I'll watch a couple uh, watchmen why, with their videos when they come up and then I post them on my page so you can find them um, because there are a lot of false teachers out there. So make sure you're listening to people that are walking in the spirit and filled with the Holy Spirit and God is speaking through them. Most of the time you'll know because you know your own Bible and, and, and they are speaking the Bible as well. Um, Okay. But, but also, if you're worried about your children, in Acts, it says, He who believes, he and his household will be saved. So look that up. Um, you know, I pray to the Lord all the time. I don't, I, I try to teach my kids. I don't push it on them. But I have faith, like avocado seed, or whatever the biggest seed out there is that he will save my babies. Okay, Matthew 24, God says the signs that to look out for. So like I said, I can read it to you, but something happens when you read it yourself. Matthew 24 and Luke 21. Um, and a lot of people say, oh, that's for the tribulation. Well, let me tell you, the whole Bible is for now. Jesus is now, every day. He's alive. He never leaves nor forsakes you. And every time you get afraid... You say that. You say the word out loud, and Satan will flee, and clarity will come to you. And, um, okay, sorry. So God says there'll be wars and rumors of wars. China is about to attack Taiwan. Russia has already been attacking Ukraine for over a year or two. Iran is attacking Jerusalem. China and Russia are a team and they're not very fond of the United States of America. So, you know, if, if, you know, if you have clarity and you keep your eyes on the Lord, don't fear, you know, he gives you peace. Every time you fear, say Satan, not today, because Satan is the one that gives fear and God is the one that gives peace. I've, I've practiced this. So just trust me on this. I'm excited. You know, and, and that's what you should be, you know. He says all, the big word is all, who love his appearing, Titus 2.13. Um, 
you know, if you're not excited, ask the Lord to help you get excited. Ask the Lord to save you. Ask the Lord to get you on the ark. Um, you know, that's the only reason the rapture, I think, hasn't happened is because God is a loving God, you know. He's a loving, loving God. And just like I would be with my children, I would be like, wait. I was very emotional. I would be like, wait, he's coming. My son is coming. My daughter is coming. Just please wait. You know, the door is about to shut. And I'm, and, and he, and God loves you like that. So he's saying, come on, get your butt on the ark, you know, get saved. And it's not that hard. All you have to do right now is, um, if you want to do it right now, we can pray. You know, let's pray right now. If you're not saved, let's pray. Dear Lord, please repeat after me. Dear Lord, please come into my heart. I believe you died on the cross for me. I believe in the finished work. Please forgive me of my sins. I believe you died and you rose again the third day. I pray that you save me and forgive me, Lord. I pray that you fill me with your Holy Spirit and you comfort me and you teach me, Lord. But most importantly, I believe that I am saved because of the blood you shed on the cross. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Okay. Hallelujah. He says, Rejoice with me, for I have found my lost sheep. Jesus leaves the 99 for the one. So I pray that you're the one, okay? Hallelujah, you're saved. You don't have to go get baptized. You don't have to do all these things, but you can. And it's a process, but all it is is the finished work of the cross. You can read it in, in 1 Corinthians 15, you know? Um, and and, and that, that's also, you know, the, the rapture is in there. So if you don't believe in the rapture, study it. You know, you're smart people out there. <laughs> Don't just don't get caught up because Satan will try to take up your time and make you watch some dance video and take up your time and have somebody call and they want to go do this and then take up your time because, oh, my goodness, you got to go shopping. Stop. Try your hardest to black it all out and read your read the word and pray. Um, OK, another thing. Everybody's talking about nuclear bombs. Um one of these days it's going to go off. And like I said, when it does go off, the evil rulers, they don't care. They don't care. But Jesus cares about you. So that's why he has us speaking out um, and, and, and giving the gospel, hoping to save one more and one more and 10 more and 20 more and 30 more. Um, okay, Walmarts are closing down. My way I see it is they're closing down. Um, it's all been planned. It's owned by the Waltons. They're billionaires. They're going to give you many excuses why they're shutting it down like they're losing profit. Well, they're the richest people on the planet. So shame on them because they're doing it because it was planned. They put Walmarts all over the world since I was a kid. In my 20s, I noticed this. And then the mom and pop stores in my area went out of business. And now in my low country town, mainly the only store we have is a Walmart. So if they shut it down, people will be forced to shop online or travel far. And how are they going to travel far if we have 15 minute cities or we don't have gas in our cars or we can't afford car insurance like me, or you can't pay for your tags and it goes on and on and on. They just tax you and give you raise the prices and they're, they're just making it hard for people. But if you trust in the Lord day by day, he will get you through just enough that you need. Um, let's see all my life. All my life. I have never prayed to Mary. <laughs> um, I've prayed for my sister Mary, but anyways, uh, no, but this is the Catholic thing. Um, it's a fake. If you read your Bible, you're never supposed to pray to Mother Mary. She was the virgin mother of God, yes, virgin mother of Jesus. And one day, when the rapture happens, maybe today, 
you know, any day, you'll go to heaven and you'll be able to meet her, you know, because that's what happens when we get to heaven. We get to meet our loved ones. And I have a mother and a brother and a grandmother and a grandpa and many friends and, and animals. You know, all things are possible with the Lord. And don't let anybody take that from you. I mean, there are people that are just evil. You know, they, they have the audacity to talk about a dead loved one. You know, God is the only judge. Don't let listen to them. Um, you pray for them. Um, you never know what somebody says within their soul before they pass away. They may have said, Lord, please forgive me. I believe you died on the cross for me. And the reason I say that is because my mom, she killed herself when I was young. And it was one of the hardest things to go through. But that's my testimony. The Lord has healed my heart from that. And I have always thought, you know what? I don't know what she said before she did that. Uh, that's why the finished work of the cross is so beautiful. Um, that is no reason to ever give up. Don't ever give up. You know, God made you for a reason. You don't want to give up. You hurt people that you leave behind. And uh, that's that's not the plans God has for you. He has mighty things for you to do, you know. Um, but my point is, is um, I don't know. I just lost myself. Uh, okay. Another thing. Aliens are not going to save you. For goodness sakes, I see it all the time. People I'm around that watch the alien, I mean, they've been prepping you your whole life. You know this. Just think about it. Okay, so you think aliens are going to come down and save you. What if you're wrong? Because you are wrong. Those are fallen angels. And do you not, I mean, they're principalities. They can do things in the sky to fool you. They can do crazy things. I mean, we've been at spiritual war, so they can do crazy things. You don't want to be here and deal with them. I mean, they're already here. They're fallen angels, and they're demons. And, and God is going to pull us out of all of that. We're going to be at peace Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. There's, there's not going to be calendar dates, but you know what I mean? We're going to wait. We're going to... The next day, and the next day, and the next day, we're never going to have to hear about anything. We're never going to have to pay bills or be scared that our heat is going to be shut off. We're never going to, you know, we're not going to starve. Our, our babies are not going to get sick, and we're not going to have to worry because everybody's going to be healthy and happy. And um, and I can't wait, you know. Uh, I just want you to see that. You know, did you think God was just going to send you to church and you'd be doing this thing day after day, week after day? I mean, is that what you want? Is that what you go to church for? Or are you excited? I mean, he believe it. He, he raised you up in that, giving you seeds, you know, you know, teaching you slowly. And here you are. It's really happening. So please don't tell me that it's not happening. I mean, you know the mark of the beast, right? You know that it's a, something that goes in your hand or your forehead so that you cannot buy or sell. Now think really hard. There's Neuralink. There's people putting things in their hands. There's hand scanners. We're here. We're here. Um, but if you're saved, the Lord is just going to take us right out. He's going to snatch us right out. You know, he's going to catch us away and... and um, He's giving us what to say, and really it's the Bible, so you know this. Please, please wake up. You know, I'm talking to people that I know, and I'm probably going to send this video to you, and it's going to sting, and and you're going to judge me, but you got to know what I say is true. you got to know, uh, Sasha, sorry, okay. go lay down, sweetie. Um, you got to know. You gotta believe your daughter. You gotta believe your friend. This is exciting, you know? I, I could give you a million dollars, but this is better. I couldn't give you a million dollars because I don't have it. <laughs> but I would if I did. But this is even better. 
This is forever. You never have to suffer anymore. No more back pain. No more, you know, no more people being mean to you. No more being judged or, or feeling ugly or feeling cheated on or, or, or just no more pain. No more war. It doesn't exist. You would wake up and never hear about a nuclear bomb again, you know. Um, but here on Earth, if you choose to stay and not get on the ark and not get saved, that's what you're going to get. You know, God is going to give you what you want. You you want parades with gay people and drag queens teaching your kids? He's going to give it to you because it's going to get even worse. Um, if you want to not believe in God and be in the witchcraft, new age, Reiki, chakra, mess, he's going to give it to you. He's going to take us home. And you're going to be stuck here with that, knowing that once the rapture happens, that you were wrong. Um, and I don't mean that mean, because I was blind too. And uh, I repented. You know, there was a day I said, Lord, what, what is happening to me? I could feel myself becoming something, you know, years ago, I could feel the darkness. I could feel the sadness. I could feel I was around friends you know, that believed in Reiki and all these things and Jezebels and all this mess. And I could feel the pain. I said, God, what is happening? And I was reading my Bible and it hit me. I said, oh my goodness, you hate witchcraft because it's, it's cheating on God. You know, he, he's just a loving father that loves you so much. And you're choosing to believe in a rock, you know, um, Ah, I've got 5% of my phone. Hold on. Okay, so I better, uh, I better, uh, you know, um, I can't talk very well. That's why I don't make these videos. But in my heart, I better wrap it up is what I was going to say. Uh. There are times I cry and uh, I just, I want you to know that no matter what you've done, that's why God made the prodigal son. You know, somebody posted this yesterday and I posted it before because I had thought the same thing. So it was confirmation for me. You know, there's nothing too bad that you've done. I don't care if you've done some, even if you've done some of the evil things I named on this video God forgives you. If you've committed rape, God will forgive you. If you've murdered, God will forgive you. If you're a prisoner, God will forgive you. If you've been abusive to your wife, God will forgive you. Um, but you have to ask him. You have to repent and believe in your heart that he died for all this evil in this world. And he loves you so much. And he knew that Satan was going to attack you and lie to you over and over again. Through the television, through the school system, through all these videos, through AI, through vanity, all these promises. He knew, but he knew he believed in you. He, he believes in you. You understand? You might not believe in him, but he believes in you that you can put the puzzle pieces together. Um, you know, armor up, you know, uh, put the helmet of salvation on. That's a real thing. You know, Satan wants to lie to you all day long. And as soon as he starts doing that, you have to be like, Lord, I put the helmet of salvation on and it blocks his lies, you know? Um, and every time you want to get mad, you have the, breastplate of love and righteousness. You, he teaches you to be gentle like he is, to stop. Like Holy Spirit will stop you and, you, and as mad as you want to be, you realize that person doesn't deserve me to yell at him or her. Uh, Jesus loves them. Who am I to tell them, you know? Um, he just teaches you so much wisdom. And uh, I guess the best thing I could try to do here is read a 
read a scripture. Let's see. Uh, let's see. What does it say here? In Isaiah 32, it says, The fruit of righteousness will be peace. The effect of righteousness will be quietness and confidence forever. Amen. I am not a very confident person, especially when it comes to these things or getting in chat rooms or lots of things. I am not confident, but when we get to heaven and we get our glorified bodies, we will be confident forever and ever. And Satan will not knock you down. He won't steal your confidence by lies, by telling you you're ugly or you're fat or, you know, God says it has nothing to do with what you wear. It has to do with your heart. And you say, well, I got a good heart. But then God teaches you more and he says, be careful, though. The heart can be deceiving. So you have to like, you have to just really know and trust the Lord. Every day read his word. But anyways, it says, my people will live in a peaceful dwelling places and secure homes and undisturbed places of rest. Amen. That sounds like what I want to do. And that sounds like heaven. Um, now will I arise, says the Lord. Now will I be exalted. Now will I be lifted up. Um, amen. You know, everywhere you read, you know, somebody once told me, you can't just open up the Bible and read anywhere. Well, I still did it. <laughs> I'm a little rebellious. As a kid, I liked to do that. And I realized the Lord was teaching me, you know, write the words of the Bible on your heart. Ask the Lord to fill you with the Holy Spirit daily. Press through the darkness and, um, and the things that stop you. Sometimes I have to run. I have to run out to my garage with my coffee cup and my robe and knowing that there's going to about to be a storm in my house. And I run to my garage and I read my Bible. Or I have to get up at five in the morning. And it's not a bad thing now. I'm excited because it's quiet. My dogs aren't up pushing me to go outside. Um, you know, I got no phone calls from the dentist's office or the school. I got to run up and drop off something. But... um I don't know. My point is, oh, I dropped my paper. Let's see. What else did I have on here? Uh, so I have my phone plugged in now, so I'm holding it all funny. And uh, let's see. God has been gracious, waiting for more. I told you that. But, you know, when people say, um, oh, they've been talking about the raptures. They did that in the 80s and, you know. Why? What, let me just tell you something. If you claim to love Jesus, why don't you want him to come? Because he's coming, number one. He has a timeline. It's not about you, partly. It's about God's timeline. And he has a really good plan. He has an awesome plan. Um, he's God. His plan is way better than your plan. <laughs> let me tell you. That, that's another thing I realized. Oh, and the bad guys are playing the good guys like they always do in these movies, you know. Um, once you know the story of God and the timeline and the plan, you know, these last couple years I've been watching movies and it drives me silly because I can see right through it. I can see that the enemy also knows God's plan and he also knows time, his timeline and they make it like, okay, for instance, there was this movie about witches fighting the bad guys. Well, let me tell you, witches are bad guys. Oh, witches fighting demons. Witches are bad in the Bible. It's Jesus fighting demons. You know, there are many antichrists. If you're not for Christ, Jesus Christ, you're an antichrist. Um, so you don't want to be on that side. Um, oh, and Elon Musk is one of them that I wrote on there because a lot of people worship Elon Musk. Don't worship a man, worship God. Don't worship Trump, worship God. Don't worship Obama. Don't worship your husband. Don't worship, you know, worship God. 
But Elon Musk, he's like giving it out. He's telling people, oh, yeah, yeah, AI is going to ruin everything. He's telling the truth, but he's looking like the good guy. When in all reality, he's the one that's making Neuralink and, you know, not not giving the gospel, not proclaiming that Jesus Christ is coming and he died on the cross. And, and eventually maybe he'll repent and he'll get there. But um, you have to seek the Lord and you have to humble yourself. Um, and I pray, I don't know, you know, some of these people I, I question, are they human? You know, like Hitler, sometimes I question, was he human? It, um, and that's what makes me think of fallen angels, but also these movies, I question, are some of the actors that we've loved, our beloved actors, are they human? Are they, are they lying? Because I mean, some of the things I've seen, like, I'm just going to say it interview with a vampire. Um, there was a scene in there with Tom Cruise and Brad Pitt, and there's a part in there. They're like, Oh, perfect. Vampires playing vampires. And it scared the heck out of me. It didn't scare me, but I just thought, oh, wow. Maybe these actors, some of them are not human. Maybe they're fallen angels. I don't have the answer to that. But how would they know that? Because that's exactly what goes on with our television. We worship these singers and these actors, and they're not bringing you close to Christ. They're not. The... the <laughs> Anyways, I don't want to go too far into that either. Um, what else did I have on here? Zoos in Ukraine. That's kind of an odd thing, but a while back, I, I pray that you understand what war brings, and I pray that you can look at the map and see that we only have so much room left on it. Everything is crumbling. Um, and the reason I said zoos, I read one time that, you know, the, the soldiers were eating the animals in the zoo, and I know that's horrible, right? It's very horrible. Um, could you imagine it happening in the United States? I mean, I, I don't, I don't want to see anybody I love have to watch these horrible, horrible things like ISIS on our land beheading people, or even Trump saying that he's going to bring back the guillotine and people cheering. I feel like people's hearts have grown cold, and you got to pray, Lord, soften my heart. Um, Lord, don't let me deceive myself. You know, God says he gives those over to a repro reprobate mind. Uh, I pray you you know that you have to go to God and he will, he will take the veil, he will lift the veil off and he will show you so much. Um, he will show you that you're okay. You're not this and that categorized by some psychiatrist. You're not, you know, most likely you're not bipolar. You're not this and that, you know. Um, the other day I thought even schizophrenics, you know, we grown up and, and they said they saw demons and we put them in a, in a mental house or, or people, you know, evil people put them in mental houses for saying that. What if they really were? And what if they just needed the tools um, that Jesus gives when he says, I rebuke you, Satan, you know, and he teaches you to put on the armor. What if that's what they needed? Um, the kids in the schools, you know, people question the school shootings. You took God out of the schools. These poor kids, they, they need hope. They need love. They don't, they don't know what it's like to pray for their enemies. You know, the ones that pray for their bullies, pray for their teachers. What would happen? Oh, my goodness. You know, um, these poor kids, they got to deal with teachers that don't know Christ and have these different agendas. And they they poke at our kids and it, and it breaks my heart. And these kids that I know kids that know the, their Bible. And they have to go to school and for an hour sit there and listen to what they know is lies when it comes to history. I can't wait to be, I can't wait for the rapture. And I hope you understand this too. Um, so that's that. 
I don't know how, what I did with this video. I just kept talking. I just pray that you understand that you look into the World Economic Forum and the and the WHO and and the Chrislam and the Pope. Oh, they're they're evil. They're evil. Okay, and they they are going to stick to their agenda. They are going to take your cars away. They are going to bomb things. They are going to. Um, teach people the wrong thing. You can't have Chris, you cannot have Christianity and Islam for God's sakes, put two and two together. You know, you, you can't have parades of gay men and women, our poor kids, you know, God is going to take our kids most likely. So, you know, because he knows they're innocent and they didn't deserve all that. But if you're an adult and you've heard the gospel and you have rejected it, please don't. You have a second chance. You know, it's grace through faith. Um, you have to believe in the finished work of the cross. Stop looking at somebody else and be like, well, no, that can't be right. Stop looking at somebody else and look at yourself. You're a sinner too, okay? Um, it's okay. It's better to just be saved and then... Through time, the Lord will help you with your sins. He will convict you and it will hurt and you will drop um, your sins left and right and left and right and you'll get stronger and you won't be quick to anger. Um, you will love somebody right off the bat, even as they're yelling at you, you will pray for them. Um, so... Just look at the United States. I mean, you got up in the corner, you got you got people on drugs, major drugs, and it's super sad. And I've been in that world. I've seen the darkness, and it is sad. Um, but all things are possible with God. Just, just write that on your heart. Every time you doubt, say, all things are possible with my God, Jesus Christ, who is Lord, the Prince of Peace, the King of Kings. Um, and he's coming. And then he's coming again after the tribulation. And it was all finished. You know, Satan's just so prideful. He thinks he's going to win. But he loses. He or has already lost. You know, it, um and keep on watching Watchmen, you know, Aaron at God a Minute and Chrissy Winlin, amazing, amazing, fun people, uh, anointed by God, you know. Um, Tyler, Generation 2434, Watchmen River, there's tons of people. There's people without names of their videos that I have seen on fire. They have had dreams and woke up and said that Jesus is coming. And God is doing that to people one after the other so that we can keep on going. He's showing us, you know, the bells are ringing, the sirens are ringing, you know, the watchman Ezekiel 33, you know, um, we are telling you so that your blood is not on our hands. Read it. How do you think God put that in there? Put it all together. Jesus is Lord. So then when you read the Old Testament, you realize that that, you know, Jesus is Lord. He is throughout the whole Bible. Um, so, yeah, I, want, I, I guess I wanted to make a video for a while, and I had, and, and uh, so I did it. And I apologize if I messed up on everything, but my heart is that one more gets saved. Um, maybe an old friend that I hung out with and traveled the roads and, you know, and... Uh, sees my face, knows that I have always loved them. And they know, they know I love Jesus. You know, if I was to pass away today and somebody was to come up to anybody that knew me and say, well, did she know Jesus? I, I pray that they say yes, because I've been saying it for quite a long time. Um, but I wasn't perfect. You know, I messed up on a lot of things um, I, that I didn't know. It was like I didn't know I was messing up. Um, that's why reading the Bible is so important and reading it every day and, and just, and just kind of tucking into to the Lord, you know, 
uh, stay close to him and trust others, you know, ask the Lord to guide you to somebody who's really good. Um, that'll be good to you. Cause I know a lot of people have been hurt and they shy away and they don't want to, um, let themselves into people. And I have been that way, you know, at times, you know, the Lord kind of showed me something. Uh, I, I was a, I don't have my, my real blood mom or dad, and I've had different families and been married and divorced. And so I got to this point where I was like, I just don't really want to get too close to anybody because I'm afraid to lose them, you know, and uh, that's not the right way to be, you know, uh, I have to, that's something I got to work on. I got to trust people more. And I have, but I don't let them in too close because I'm afraid of gossip. I'm afraid of things and, and I shouldn't be. Um, but if you are, it's okay. You know, it's good to be meek. You know, women are, are, are meant also to pray and, and let the men speak. Listen to, to our brothers that are standing up for the Lord. I, I truly believe the Lord does say that for a reason. But also, if you're a woman, it doesn't mean that you shouldn't say anything. You know, if the Lord is, is, is you know, if you say, Lord, here I am, use me. Um, if your heart is right. And you know that nobody deserves the seven-year tribulation. Even though I know some people are just going to have to be tribulation saints, I still have to get on here and make a video in case I save one more person, um, one more 20-year-old, 30-year-old, 40-year-old. Um, you know, when I got saved, all I said, I was in my car. I wasn't in a church building. I just said, Lord, which is funny because I said, Lord, you know, or I, I just, I was just like, God, if you're real, if, Jesus, if, if you are who they say you are, if you are really the Jesus that everybody claims to be, I could really use you. That's what I said in my car. Um, and then, and then I started reading the Bible and I said, Lord, I don't understand this, you know, can you help it make sense? And he did. Oh my goodness, did he? Uh, he's doing mighty things. He's doing new things. He makes you a new creation. All these lies of this world, you know, you can change. People do change, you know. They say, oh, he'll never change. People never change. It's just, he's just like his dad. She's just like her mom. No, no, Jesus can change you. So don't believe those lies. Um, you're a new creation under Christ. You don't have to bow down to anybody else anymore. I mean, you know, you respect them, but you only listen to God. That's the beauty of it. And you know, you know that you know that you know him. You know, it's not a religion. Um, Jesus Christ is a relationship every single day. That's why people say that. And uh, God bless you know, them on the internet. I'm not going to say God bless the internet because I don't, you know, believe in it, but I am grateful for what it's done for me and all that I've learned from the watchmen and the people that record their dreams and the people that are moved by the spirit and, and, and writing down scriptures and they speak to me and, and others. And I'm grateful for the family of God that has been created. I love you guys. Um, I see your names and I pray. I pray for people that, you know, they don't know I pray for them, but I do. I pray for their healing. I pray that God feeds them. Um, and just remember, Satan is accuser of the brethren. So if somebody comes up to you, it's not always that person, but the demons behind them. You can tell the closer you get to God, you might have some more attacks. Um, another thing, gang stalkers. I really contemplated this because I tried to figure it out, but don't get stuck in that spot. All things are possible with God. If you, if you feel like you are being followed by demons and you're constantly having spiritual attacks and you, you, you're, you're not reciting the scripture, all things are possible with God. Lord, take this away. Lord, get this witchcraft away from me. Lord, protect me from any witchcraft spells, you know. Um, 
It breaks my heart when people say, oh, I'll send you good vibes. No, don't send it to me. I don't want no good vibes or, or good positive thoughts. I don't. Not for me, not for my kids. I want a prayer to the Lord, God Almighty, who made everything, even the breath you're breathing for my children. Um, and I miss those people that once used to pray for me, with me, and now all of a sudden the, they're, they won't even say that. Um, and it's okay. I, I get it. I get it. You, you just, just wake up realize that that stuff is fake. Realize it's from the devil. The devil will give you peace as long as you're not next to Christ. But the closer you get to God, he gets pissed and you can see it and you're calm because you know you're going to be okay. Um, even if you, even if the, you were to die, you know, nothing can steal you out of his hand. Oh, death, where is your victory? Um, so just remember, I, the last thing I have on here is spiritual warfare. We kind of talked about that. Um, take a minute to look at the earthquakes and the volcanoes and the ruins on our planet. Look at the banking system and just think about it. You know, put all the puzzle pieces together. The whole Bible, you know, Esther, you were made for such a time as this. Not just Esther, you. You. God raised you up to know all these things. Have you forgotten him? Did you quit praying at the dinner table? Did you quit praying and saying, thank you, Lord, for my food? Lord, protect me from, you know, you say that poisons won't hurt me. Give me nourishment. Um, did you stop believing he could heal you instead run to a pharmaceutical? Because pharmacia is in the Bible. Beware. You know, he didn't make that men invented all these things. And, and granted, God puts his hands on the doctors too, to help us. I mean, I had my appendix out, so I wouldn't be here if it wasn't for the doctors, but I also had been around drugs and I know what they do. I know what they do. Um, and, and a lot of people I know are on the same drugs that used to be off of the streets. I mean, ketamine. Isn't that, I, I didn't take ketamine, but I, isn't ketamine like a major drug? Uh, we just had I, a friend takes it now because he's depressed. And um, I just, you know, it's just another dollar bill for the pharmaceutical company. It's a big old scam and half of our people are on drugs. You know, whether they're homeless on drugs in in you know, Portland, Philadelphia, or we've got our parents on pharmaceuticals and, you know, and, and, um, and I'm not perfect. I, I don't take those things, but there's other things that, you know, I ask that you pray for. Um, so yeah, like I said, either you will take everything I have said and you take it to heart and you say, Lord, please save me today. I don't want to be left here. I don't want to be left here on this earth. I don't want my grandbabies, my neighbors, my mom or dad. I mean, you got to be on fire for the Lord. You got to read. Um, but if you believed in the finished work in the cross and you believe in the rapture, you'll know, you'll know, um, or you can get off this video and the next day you be, you can be mad at me and, and take Satan's lies that he whispers in his head. Um, but I'm telling you, Jesus is coming. And every day you can go right on my community page. There was person after person after person after person that in their spirit, they know. They know because they've read the Bible. They know because they're saved and they don't have a reprobate mind. They know because they've read the signs, they've seen the earthquakes, they know. So, um, I better get off of here. I don't know how long this video is, and I, and I just, uh, I'm just going to pray again. Lord, thank you. 
thank you for letting me make this video. Um, thank you for everything you've done for me, every trial you have brought me through, and for the ones that I may go through in the future. Uh, Lord, I just ask that people know not only that you're coming, that but that you can be with them minute by minute, hour by hour, day by day, and, and make it easy while we wait. Um, and if it's not easy, Lord, may they see you in the mix, knowing that you're the potter, we're the clay, you're making us strong, you're refining us by fire, you've made us warriors, you've made us gentle, um, and I just thank you for that. I thank you for brothers and sisters that I did not know years ago, but now I know many and I love them. Whether they love me or not, I love them. Um, thank you for letting me see what the enemy wants to throw at me and, uh, and being able to stand up to it. And uh, just thank you for dying on the cross for me. And thank you for all of those that you're going to save. Thank you that your promises are true. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Bye, guys.